So, Autumn, you want to start and just take us through, you know, in, in your world from an agency side, how you educate clients is clients on the difference between a 360 video and VR, um, as an example, and then I'll let Arif talk about AR. Well, we're actually pretty fortunate because we have a couple of clients in the travel and the tourism vertical, which is really easy to translate well into 360 video or into yep. VR. But we also have a, a special business unit called, do you want me to move my hair or something? Is that me? I think it's me. I don't know who it was, but okay. I don't know who was that first. There's this is the big green button. No, that's what I was talking about. That is the big green button. Um, so we have a specialty group at, at OMD that's called Zero Code, and they really focus on um, gaming and virtual reality and augmented reality. Okay. So they've been involved at the forefront as that whole technology has exploded, made a lot of partnerships in the space with different companies that are even developing the assets assets and we'll show some of that in a, in a little bit but so we've had that advantage that we have knowledge experts in-house that we can get in front of the client and kind of talk about all right here's here's how it works and here's how it can work for you and here's how you can actually create the assets okay and Arif from a, an AR perspective um, what how do you help clients understand what AR really means and differentiate right. it from VR yeah, I mean, it's a really good, it's a great question, I think, um, especially if you go back a year from now, it's really confusing. Yeah. You know, you read, art read articles and it'll be AR, VR on the same headline. Yep. So people are trying to figure it out. Just, just generally, for, to describe it, I mean, AR is very much about enhancing your reality. VR is about escaping from your reality when you put something on your head and you're completely submerged. So I think those are the two sort of directions. Um, the big headline, I think, for us as a company was, you know, Pokemon Go. You know, everyone understands, you know, has anyone not heard of Pokemon Go, firstly? <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, that's awesome, right? You must be living under a rock I, right now. Yeah, I've been playing it all day. No, so I think the, the has, has some numbers. I just want to run some numbers by you, because this is when we all sort of sit forward and we think about, you know, when consumption becomes really interesting. Yeah. You know, the telephone, the old telephone, you know, took 75 years to get to 50 million users. The mobile phone took three years to get to 50 million users. Pokemon Go took 19 days. I mean, I mean, that's a bit of a wake up, right? And now for us, we're like, oh, thank God, someone knows what AR is. The camera opens, something happens in a camera, and it enhances the world. So I think, you know, technologies that have become more pop culture are definitely a great way in which the tides change. Yep. And, you know, we've been doing this for four and a half years, so people go, okay, I get it now. I understand that, that behavior. And also the consumption opportunity. When you talk about television consumption, Digital, right? Digital spend is finally like the eclipse thing with, with, with TV spend. But consumption of AR is something I think we're going to hear more of based on those numbers that I just shared with you. Excellent. And I think with that, did you have, looks like we're maybe teed up oh, okay. to your content. Fantastic. It's the wrong clicker. That's hilarious. That's okay, though. We'll roll with this. So I thought what I would do is just give you, um, just in the room, has everyone heard of Blipper? Are you still sort of new to Blipper? Just put your hands up if you know us as a company. Okay, cool. So I just want to expand upon just a few things. Um, what we're doing is we're building the first visual browser. So what you know, the internet and search engines and Googles have done for words, we're going to do for the physical world. Now, clearly, that takes a long time, and the technology is a big driver of this. But what I've done is just I've got a, sort of a, a quick presentation just to show you sort of what are the big drivers for AR in terms of consumption. You know, and how that's, that's building upon this momentum and this movement of AR that we're seeing that is becoming very disruptive, not just in the commercial space, but in entertainment, in um, education, in training and enterprise, but all of these other verticals that people are already using it today on. I mean, as a market right now, um, uh, DigiCapital said it was a $120 billion business between AR and VR. $90 billion, and this is by 2020. So what, we're talking about three and a half years from now, or four, whatever. So that means 90 billion is AR. It's a big slice of it. So how, how do we get a piece of that? How do we grab a piece of this? So part of this, these uh, philosophies are, are, are sort of the things that are shifting and, and making AR a little bit more of a head, um, headline for us. Um, you know, as we see, you know, our, our, our actual mission is to give you more from the world. So right now and today, we're in an app. We're going to be in a browser. We're going to be in glass. You'll see us evolve in the next six to nine months. Um, but what's really driving this is sort of this, this whole shift in behavior. You know, we mentioned Pokemon Go, but people are looking for the... Oh, it's more. Did I 
I just shut down? No, you're okay. good. It's becoming more of an extension of uh, our eyes, the lens, and the camera. So we're seeing this shift in behavior um, happening today. Um, in publishing, I, was, I started with a phone over here. I think you all remember the, the rim phone, right? How great was that? I mean, looking down on the rim phone with any, you know, just sending emails um, to now where we're putting out hair, but it's becoming an extension of our eyes. And that, that's one, one core um, philosophy or, or, or key attribute towards this movement of AR. Um, the second one is, you know, one that we're very close to, but very simply, words aren't enough. Uh, and what we mean by that is, you know, yeah, I, I remember back in the day, I was living in San Francisco when Google was about $150 million business, you know, and they were fueling everybody else. They were literally, we worked, I worked for CNET.com, if you guys remember those, that, that company, it's now CBS. Um, they actually had the URL search.com. Can you imagine that? Search, and it was powered by Google. How funny. Uh, so, you know, the, the fact is, you know, these technologies that we had, HTTP, JavaScript, all helped us drive it. And we were able to use words to describe what, what we're thinking about or, you know, sort of our intent, uh, our pull ideas. But today, words aren't enough because when we see things, if I see, you know, uh, if my wife and I are shopping, she sees a red dress that she wants, you know, she can't, you know, both her and I would describe it very differently online as opposed to being able to see it there and, and for it to bring information. So there is this sort of words aren't enough and this new field of science that we're seeing today that's helping us take the technology to a different level, as it did with the internet, like HTTP and JavaScript, are things like um, uh, specifically um, computer vision you'll hear about nowadays, right? Machine learning, deep learning, all these variables are helping people really take uh, the, the technology to a whole new level where computers can recognize objects and, and translate them back with, with uh, a relevancy. The third one is a little bit more in our world. Um, you know, we believe in all mediums, right? So television, obviously, print, online, you know, all amazing mediums. But we also believe there's a new media out there, and that's the product. Product is a new media. You know, our goal is to unlock product and bring back a story or tell you the transparency of uh, a, a banana or a tomato or, or tomato, you know, all of those things, right? So, you know, bringing them all home, but, you know, giving you that value and understanding it and also being a way to, to really tell you about the product itself, you know. Gone are the days when I'm looking at, you know, a Pepsi, you like that? That's not bad, right, OMD? Uh, <laughs> a Pepsi product and saying, you know, I want to learn about it versus just being able to blip on it and it tells me what's going on as opposed to putting in a URL name. So that, those are the ambitions that we're driving to. So very much the three fundamentals uh, drivers that we're pushing on. Firstly, huge shift in behavior. We're seeing it today. Consumptions are changing. This new platform will be AR consumption. Secondly, uh, words aren't enough. We want more, right? And our technologies are giving us the ability to do that. And the third one is product is the new media. Product and objects. Whether it's an Amazon tree or a plant, and I want to know what that plant is without a chip, to an actual product like CPG. So, you know, we have this philosophy of like the internet um, of things that we all, we've all heard about, like our fridge and our, our phones and our televisions. There's a shift that we're seeing, which is more the internet on things, so that I can explain what something is. So what I'm gonna show you is two quick demos. The first one is gonna just show you what we're doing today and what we've been doing for years and bringing packaging alive. The key difference is it's taking image recognition to object recognition. And that's a big shift, right? Object recognition is when I'm looking at um, Autumn's great boots there, and I, you know, I recognize them with maybe a 1,000 photographs to tell me what it is, versus recognizing it with three photographs and then machine learning it. So that's the big shift that you'll see. So in the first case study, we had, um, you're not going to like this. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, Coke, the cola. So they had um, they've done a case study with us where um, it was actually 7-Eleven, Spotify, and Coca-Cola with Share a Coke. They wanted to basically, 7-Eleven wanted to digitize their stores and bring it alive. And what they did was, in every store, you'd go in the stores, you'd have literally like a, a jukebox with a, it's a 16 ounce can. It's very large. I have to show you it because it's so big, but it's hair. So it's like a 16 ounce can, massive can. You know, we'd have this call to action, like blip on the actual uh, can. Would actually and then you'd be able to download Spotify and then share it. You'd have some fun sharing things like dropping the mic as a, an example, but really making it fun from an entertainment perspective. 
Um, this is very much object recognition and it's very successful, it seems to be a global opportunity now, a plan across the but the fact that it was very, you know, very specific to really drive engagement and entertainment using AR for image recognition. So enhancing our reality right now as we speak with audio and visual. Um, so let me show you this really fast. It's a quite a fast demo, but you'll get the sense of it. I don't have a pause on it, but we'll go fairly fast and you'll see the image recognition where you go into a 7-Eleven store, you see the can, uh, and then you, you blip the can and it becomes this uh, jukebox. I wanted to do a live demo today, but we couldn't fix it, unfortunately, Gabe. Um, you can go up and scroll, uh, kind of fun stuff. You know, you can play the mic and then drop the mic and share that. So it's just a fun thing. So every can came to life with a story. You were able to like, engage in Spotify music and drive that. So that's an example commercially of how we're working. We work in education. So with teachers, we, you know, we, we give them the tools to be able to enhance their lessons in AR uh, so they're scalable and measurable. And we believe in you know, visual learning, the bottom 50% can really rise from this. Uh, so we have about 60,000 schools that we're in in the States right now where they're playing with this tool, enabling them to use it. Um, and then where we're going, and you'll see us now, if you download the app today and you open it, you'll see that it will recognize objects right now. It's like, the, it's like a five-year-old. And if you download it, you'll see how it picks up like you know, shoes, sky, you know, watches, hands, logos, etc. We have our big launch in December, and you'll see more of it. But this is sort of a, a sense of what it would look like. So I'll start the video now. And turn the volume up, please. Have you ever seen a flower and wondered what kind it was? Have you looked at an animal and wanted to learn more? Do you ever wish your favorite food could tell you everything about it? And what if an instrument could teach you how to play it? Could the brands you love tell you their stories? And now imagine the simplest objects connected in ways you never thought possible. The world around you can now come to life like never before, inspiring you to go on the most unexpected journeys. Discover more from the world you see. Welcome to Blipper. So that's our, our core product. You'll see this launch. It's launched today. It's a beta, and you'll have more products in December. Um, so, you know, quite, quite clearly what search has done for words, Blipper will do for the physical world. Uh, and that, that's our, our journey. Excellent. So, uh, Thank you. Thank you. I think, Autumn, you've got a couple of videos. I do. I do. Since we were talking about how content is king, um, and I'm on a panel, I have to say it. Um, how difficult it can be to move into this type of space. First of all, creating some of the assets can be really expensive, or making sure that you have the right kind of content, and then how are you gonna distribute it? Uh -oh. Sorry. Man down. Um, so I have examples of things that we did earlier in the year. One of them is uh, virtual reality that we did for our um, Hawaii Visitors Bureau client. So they wanted an example of a VR example that they could share out at uh, trade shows and at the Hawaii Tourism Visitors uh, Convention earlier in the year that kind of showcases two of the islands. So it's Oahu and it's Big Island. Um, and they're going to do two more islands a little bit later in the year, and now we've recently found a way to also amplify that and create new experiences that are, that are going to uh, be propelled by paid media. So we'll show this to you, I think. Our friends have all shared their Hawaii vacations with us. Their honeymoons, their adventures, all of it. And we followed their journey with every heart and thumbs up along the way. We've traveled with them through their posts, their vlogs, and even their new toys. But maybe for once, instead of living vicariously through their eyes, we can start to live vicariously through our own and stop visiting where they've already been, but choose where we actually want to go. We're not island hopping in this experience. We are island soaring. And once we land at our destinations, we can take it all in. Whether it's catching your first party wave with a pro stand-up paddler, 
missing a one-of-a-kind spiritual moment with a local singer. Chasing one waterfall after another with a Hogulay crew member. Or jamming along a dramatic coastline with another local talent. We can take in all that Hawaii has to offer. Every single bit of it. So as of like this week or maybe next week, it's going to be launching into several um, VR apps um, through a media partner uh, just to kind of extend the experience and get a little bit more traction behind it. But it was a very big hit at the convention. Uh, there were several write-ups that kind of said that VR is really going to change the, the way that tourism advertises and the way they work and the way that people can experience it. So it's kind of a natural fit for that experience. Excellent. Uh, we do have another example, and this one is for Hilton. Uh, they did a 360 video of their Barbados property, and this one we had a lot more distribution channels for it. So it lives on YouTube permanently now, but we had it in the uh, New York Times VR app. We've had it um, through a few other partners as well. So it had quite a bit of distribution behind it. It was also on Facebook. The challenge we found with this is, is not the distribution, but it was still more the measurement. So getting engagement, you're still kind of constricted to views, and then even it's not even completed views um, on all platforms. Only a couple of platforms are actually able to measure it. So there's some limitations there, but I, I think as the technology grows, the measurement is going to have to grow, so there's more um, adoption of it. So we'll just like take a look at, at this example. Do you want me to push the button? There what you do you it. see when you turn around? Look harder. This isn't just a hotel. It's your launch pad, the place where everything starts. Because when you stay at Hilton, you can go anywhere you want. So what will it be? Where will your next trip take you? Will you dive into the unexplored? Learn to breathe underwater? Will you ditch everyone and miss no one? Reenact that scene you saw in a movie that one time? Will you and your friends escape the day in, day out? Will you discover that you can't get stuck in a rut when you're on top of the world? Will changing time zones change you? Hey, no pressure. Sometimes the only change you need is a little sun and no plans at all. Then again, there are times when you need to push yourself. When you want to live a family it. adventure. It's two and a half minutes. Maybe you can see why maybe we didn't get 100% completion <laughs> rate all the time. It's a little long, but very thorough. So it's interesting, you, you showed us a VR example and then a 360 video, right? And I think one of the common misconceptions or the confusions in the market is even you said your 360 video is in the VR app, right? Mm -hmm. So um, help the audience understand the difference between virtual reality, where you're truly augmenting their world and taking them to a, a location versus um, a 360 video. Right, so I think it's, it's what he said earlier in that one is a lot more immersive. So you're completely surrounded by the experience, but it requires equipment, right? Or even a Google Cardboard or something like that. Right. It's not as easy to do versus going to YouTube or Facebook and then just using your mouse to cursor around and look at things. So that, I mean, that's a bigger difference. It depends on how willing you are to immerse yourself in that and if you have the equipment to do so. Okay, and so um, I, I guess, and correct me if I'm wrong, but trying to, to play the idiot in the room, um, which I do well. I mean, I just, <laughs> um, <laughs> if I'm to think about augmented reality, it's thinking about augmenting an object or my environment and learning more about it, right? It's bringing something to life 
in a way that you can't do with just by you know taking a picture of it or ser searching on the internet. Yeah. <clears throat> and and virtual reality is fully immersing yourself in a in a world that you could go visit, but with the through heart. the use of goggles or cardboard or some other device, yeah. you can explore and enhance your your world without having to make the trip to that location. Correct. Right? Yeah, that's what Autumn was saying. So if, if that's the case, I mean, we, we have, you know, we struggle to get brands to do, and agencies to do social media at scale, um, to do video um, in many ways at scale. Moving digital dollars back to television has been a challenge. How do we get brands and agencies to think seriously about AR and VR, um, and how do we get it to scale to the billions that you were talking about earlier, Reef? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a real, it's a, it is a challenge, and it's quite intimidating for brands and marketers when they see, you know, this new technology. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you jump on that? How do you find the next big wave? Um, I think the most important thing, when you, when you take out, so if you have virtual reality on one side, you have AR on the other side, everyone talks about the hype and the growth. I mean, I think Pokemon Go has already done 300 million plus, right? They're averaging 15 million a day in, th well, they launched, what, three months ago. Um, <clears throat> and it hasn't disrupted gaming. Which is a really interesting stat. It hasn't taken away from the gaming category. It's only got bigger. I think what um, when everyone hears the numbers, what 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 gets left behind are the content producers, the people that are building this, um, the people that build these great experiences in, in 360 video or the soon-to-be vol volumetric video, this crazy stuff where you're like, you know, in 3D, 4D, or whatever. But I think the the opportunity to enable people with the technology is what's key. Um, I remember in, in, in the digital days, and I went, I'm going back years, I'm quite old, but when I first started, it was exciting, but we didn't have great creative, right? You know, and you know, TV obviously was great creative, and it still is, but you know, that was how do you grab that? So I think the, the fact that one has to give tools that enable content producers to build AR and VR experiences at scale, that's what is the key. Um, and there's lots of companies doing it, you know, um, I mean, uh, a little self-serving here, but we are obviously. You know, we 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 started as a creative agency, um, but we can't do the world's creative in AR. Uh, and we've built our API tool where you can literally do 3D animations. I mean, really kind of deep deep dive learning on computer vision, all built in for a agency or a brand at a very high level. And at the same time, you know, my daughter who is nine years old, um, we've we've built a drag and drop version where she can send like her grandfather a Christmas card or birthday card that comes to life. So I think the, so I guess the key thing is giving and enabling tools will help drive that further and faster for the, for, for the business. And I just saw that uh, there's a lot more equipment on the market now too. Yeah. $300 price point and then I think Sony's expecting like three million, to ship three million units this year of yep. their new uh, headset. So. I think the adoption is going to be there. You just have to have the right content, the right brands to kind of lead it. Yep. I think tourism, travel lends itself well. Gaming, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so you just have to be mindful of the environment you're in. So that's an interesting uh, transition with the devices. Um, you know, a few years ago, uh, many people thought the future of television was 3D, right? And all these great 3D TVs came out. Glasses are there. Um, 3D TV quickly died on the vine. Is virtual reality the next 3D? I think it's going to be better than that. I think it's going to stick around. Why do you think that? Because it's awesome. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, no, I mean the, look the at adoption it, I mean, of the devices in itself is is a challenge, right? Getting yeah, people to no, buy. Ga it. But gaming, for example, is, I mean, it's huge. I mean, London Heights, who hasn't played that? And you know, it's, there's some great game. The gamification is brilliant. Sure. Sports. It's going to be massive, right? I mean, it still has a massive opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of going into drone racing because I think it's so cool. But I mean, to be able to do that with, with you know, virtual reality glasses. I mean, this technology is around the corner, and I think, I think we got to, you know, I think with broadcast and television, there are ways in which they complement each other, without a doubt. Um, I mean, to do an AR experience off a screen that's running live, it can be done today. Yeah. Um, in the same way with VR, right? So I think. Uh, I think it's going to be the new social media. I think they're going to there you go. start being able to create 360 experiences and share it with your friends. That's cool. You, hear, you heard it here first. <laughs>